All right, welcome back. So right back to where we were, let's hop in here again. Okay, so I think we're sounding pretty good. The only thing that I would probably do at this point is take some of these things that I brought in over here, and maybe we can bring these in as well. So for example, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just option drag it right over here, but I need to make sure that I engage my grid mode. And let's just take this and let's just snap that here. Okay, or maybe we could try it somewhere else. Maybe we could try it on chorus one. So let's go ahead and let's drag that to chorus one. Solo this for a moment. And then we have this really cool glitchy sound that we have as well. Let's go ahead and just zoom in on this for a second. Let's go ahead and take this and we will unmute it. And I want to take this and I want to place that somewhere. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And let's bring that to maybe uh, we will put it at, I'll tell you what, I know a good place that we could put it. We could put it right at chorus two. So let's go to chorus two. Let's paste that. And let's listen to this now. Like an animal, like an animal. So just these really cool things that add all these little bits of interest. If we were to solo this out, really, really cool, right? So we could go ahead and we could add a little bit of a fade in there. Just go to our slip mode for a second. Drag this to about here. And these are the types of things that really make the song and take it to another level in terms of production and in terms of making these transitions interesting. You my world shake, I'll tell you, if I had a little bit more time, there's one thing that I might consider doing is on this arpeggiated synth that we added, which is super cool. I might think about automating the cutoff point of this plugin over here. Right now we have it set here. Like an animal, like an animal. Like an animal, like an animal, like an animal. But now we're just talking about nitpicking. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select everything. We want to make sure that we leave enough for any decay. Let's take these guys over here and move them all out of the way. I'd say by about this point, it's out. We're gonna hop into our grid mode. And now from here, we can go all the way to the beginning. And now essentially this is the selection or the range that we wanna export. Okay, so now that I've got the selection, we know that this is the range that we wanna export. But one thing that we wanna do before we export is we want to go ahead and we want to make some adjustments. Let's go ahead and get rid of our memory locations over here. I want to bring the level up a little bit. Now, if you notice at the very beginning of this, you recall me saying that I brought down my click track to minus 15 and all of these sounds that I was bringing in, in terms of virtual instruments, I was immediately pulling down the output to like minus 20 or minus 22, which seems like a lot and it seems really quiet. But when you get to the end of your production, Notice that not one point here have I clipped my output. And in fact, I still have some headroom. So actually, let's go ahead and let's bring in our markers again really quickly. And let's see where we're sitting on our master outs. So minus four. Let's go to our chorus two. Okay, so like I said, we still have headroom here. We have lots of headroom left over. And we can go ahead now, we can add our final plugins. Now, I'm not gonna do anything in terms of EQing or compressing this, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add a limiter. And the limiter that I'm gonna use is called Maxim. So it's Maxim Stereo. The first thing we need to do is we need to set a ceiling. I'm gonna say, I don't want anything more than minus one. The second thing we need to do is we need to adjust this threshold. Now let's aim 
for, let's say, knocking off maybe one to two dBs in terms of limiting. Now we were keeping our eye on the peak. So let's say our max peaks were around minus three or minus two. Then I think we could easily pull this threshold down to like minus four or minus five. And keep in mind, this is gonna be a little bit louder. I'll tell you one thing that's really sticking out for me right now is the piano seems like it's really really loud and I want to just soften this let's bring up the ambience a bit and I need to release the energy inside me cuz you make my world change Okay, you know what, even though this piano has reverb, I'm also gonna add a little bit of reverb here as well. Just a touch. Just to kind of glue everything together and put everything in the same element. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I could go here and I could sit here and tweak things and just take forever on this, but there is a point when you have to say, all right, I think we're good. And if I was working or collaborating with somebody on this, such as the singer, and they would get a co-write on this, I would definitely be wanting to send out something and share it with my friends or my fans or whoever I intend to share this work with. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let's bounce this out. I'm going to go ahead and make a selection across here. This will be the range that we're bouncing out. One thing I don't want to get too technical about, but this is something that's built into a lot of limiters these days, and this is dither. So if you're planning on taking something and you want to burn it to a CD, you definitely want to make sure. You can see even I have this quick tip. Dither masks quantization noise by adding non-correlated noise to signal. Basically, you need it if you're going to be releasing this as a CD. So let's go ahead and let's put our dither on noise shaping and we're going to choose 16-bit. I'm completely happy with these settings. I think we have a decent amount of limiting happening, and I think our mix sounds relatively loud and it's got a lot of punch, and I think we made some good decisions in terms of the sounds that we chose. So with that having been said, let's go ahead now. We're gonna go File, we're gonna go Bounce to Disk. I'm gonna choose my main outs. I can choose Wave, Interleaved. In this case, we're gonna go 16-bit, and I wanna make this 44-1. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, Groove, three, song, and I'm going to say final bounce. We're going to do this. We can do this offline or we can do it in real time. I got to be honest with you, quite often I like listening to things in case something catches my ear, but we can do it offline if we need to get something out quick. And then, of course, we can also add an MP3. We'll have to fill out some additional information. So let's copy this name. We'll click the add MP3 option. We'll go ahead and click bounce and it's going to bring us into here. Here I can put any artist name or anything I need and then encoding speed I always go highest quality and we can choose for example let's choose 256 and we'll leave this as groove 3 final song bounce and we'll go ahead and click OK.
Awesome. So now we have our final bounce done. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and we can open up a finder window. So I'm going to move to my finder and we'll just bring up a new window over here. And I'm going to scroll to the location that I put this and we can go into here and then we have our bounced files. And here we have our two files. So we have our groove three song final bounce.mp3. And in addition to that, we also have our 16 bit 44 one song that can be sent off or burnt to a CD. So anyways, I just wanted to say thanks for joining me on this course. I know we went pretty deep on things, but I think it's really important to point out that when you're working with Pro Tools, you don't necessarily need the latest and greatest and best third-party virtual instruments to get a great sounding song. Pro Tools ships with a lot of very usable instruments as long as you know how to choose your sounds and adjust things to fit the context and fit the track you're working with, you can get some great results. So anyways, my name is Marcus Huskins, and you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Marcus Huskins. And until the next time, I hope you guys got something from this, and we'll catch you in the next series. Cheers.